Want to give everyone a huge, huge thank you for joining us here this weekend for the largest paying drag race in history, the SFG 500, $525,000 a win main event. We're getting ready to get it kicked off. Everyone here at SFG Promotions, the US 131 track crew, want to thank each and every one of you for spending your hard earned dollar with us, spending your time with us, your friends, your family, those that can be here and those that take care of things while you're away from home. We know you can do a lot of things and we really appreciate each and every one of you being here. We hope to have a great event. If you're awake, get to the fence. Because boy, do we have a show for you. Left side, Gage Birch, the Ford Ranger, dialed 650 out of Palomino, Florida. He'll take on JBR, Johnny Bracket Racer himself, trying to pick up. The largest payday in all of drag racing. $525,000 on the line. Three bulbs are lit. We're good to go. Tree comes down. Five bow, separate them up. July 4th is the day that we will do the million. I love everything that's happened along the way, the crazy stuff that's gone on. And when this guy called me and said, hey, can you come to my race and be part of the largest payout in the history of the sport, I literally couldn't say yes quick enough. This is SFG Kyle, of course, and dude, what you were doing here is beyond words. Do you even believe what we got going on here? <laughs> yes, I do, I do. After seeing the 500 last year, I envisioned this. I think this is one of these things, and I know it is. 10 years, 20 years from now, there's gonna be 
10,000 people that claim they were at the first one of these. Exactly. And there's going to be this awesome group of hundreds of the best racers and a few of us that are lucky to be part of it. And I can't thank you enough. Uh, man, I, I, I can't thank you enough for accepting my offer to come along and, and join the reins of um, Hank Mulligan, you know, who's a oh, good yeah. friend of mine. Yep. I've known him for a long time. Cracks jokes on the mic. Oh, he's so great. I said, we're going to add to Hank and bring in Brian and and, and, uh, and I can't wait for you guys to team up all three. It's this guy's vision, it's this guy's guts, and this guy's determination that made it happen. On behalf of everybody in drag racing, man, thank you. Thank you. Somebody at the end of the day going to be changing their tax bracket. One billion dollars. The largest purse in drag racing history on the line. We are ready to rock, roll, and rumble round number two. Out of the gate, run it. Separated by foul on this end. Separated by a foul on that end. 17 10 thousandths at the strike. Four inch. Jake Coughlin Jr., great to see you here, obviously. Good to be here. Very thankful for Jake's support of this event and the fact that your entire family is here racing. <laughs> We've got quite a few cars. Uh, you know, uh, SFG does a heck of a job, uh, you know, putting up $1.1 million. It's, it's insane. We're talking about uh, drag racing. This is the biggest paycheck anybody's ever going to win, or anybody has ever won. Everyone in the history of drag racing, top fuel included. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing to have the opportunity to even race for this kind of money. Kyle really brought it to the next level. I think he's inspired a lot of other promoters to to step up and actually pay the racers. And I mean, just a man, I would have never believed it. You know, the actual opportunity to win a million dollars, or one point one actually. We move into the door slammer category, the door car category here. Champs performance, round number three. Dragsters getting ready to roll out next for their next round. Should have about 110 coming back from the round of 220. Just watching even some of the re-entry races we've seen earlier, it's like I've seen guys lose in the most painful way possible twice or three times in the same day. I've had I've had three total put on me twice in less than 24 hours while I've been here. This thing goes for a week straight, basically. How do you kind of keep yourself sharp? Um, really, with the, so much downtime, I know a lot of people take naps. I'm not a napper, but keep keep water in you, keep fluids in you, you know, keep it going and try to just not overthink it. You know, you think too much, that's when you make mistakes. Just go out there and let it flow and do your thing. Wow.
round number four. Competition in our million dollar main event brought to you by All Star Performance. Our May race carbs round four. No box getting ready to roll out. Our finals and top sportsman and top dragster in the lanes as well. Like we've got about 52 door cars left, 55 dragsters plus our cars that from the jackpot are going back in. So got some work to do, but the field is getting smaller and smaller, and we saw it in that last round of elimination. As the side-by-side -side competition really stepping up the game. of May Race Carbs Round 4 of the All-Star Performance 1.1 million guaranteed main event here at the Jags SFG Million. And we got two guys that are going to wait on each other to be the first to stage. Tension is definitely on the rise here in the racetrack. You can feel the electricity coming. You can certainly see it in the faces and the actions of these racers. And the question of who wants to be a millionaire, we are drawing closer and ever so closer to the answer. Platinum Products, round five of eliminations for our dragsters coming up now. Crowd is starting to bust up down there, so I think we may have struck some sort of an agreement, which is a good thing for all involved, maybe. Good thing for us, though, because we'll be going racing here in just a couple of minutes. Those of you watching on Motor Mania TV, there was a lot of discussion going on, of course, as there always is at basically this point of the race, as far as what the split's going to be. What's the winner going to walk away with? That was all, at least, perhaps, hammered out down there in the staging lanes. All right, guys, rolling into the round of 19 entries. There are 18 cars left, 19 entries. Bill Swain is still doubled. And uh, at this round of 19, the split has begun. To lose here is 12-5.
add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, euro, euro, peso, peso, add it up, add it up. I'm just doing me, everything is on me. Will Crawford triple zero one right side of the racetrack and he loses. Hunter Patton, he goes dead one, double oh one starting line. Take it twenty eight at the finish line. Stripe and Will Crawford was triple zero one on the right side of the drag strip and will not see a win light. And the crowd's dispersing and it's time to go back drag racing to take ten cars and make them five. Jason Hammerline, right side of the racetrack. Chris Dixon left. Chris Dixon picked the wrong time to have a slightly tardy reaction time, and Jason Hammerline is going to nail him for it. Dead on one for Hammerline, taking 35 at the finish line. Stripe, he goes 586, one on an 86 dial with a 15 light. Brian Cerruti, foot breaks his way to a 005 and a win light, 636, two. Cisco's pre staged. 009 red with the wheels up and the headlights on. That's even cooler. And he's got to lift early. Bill Swain, a man who is doing an incredible impersonation of himself because he has two entries left. This one, he's going to face Jeff Serra. And Bill Swain ain't scared. 003 green, but right there next to him was a 004. Swain wins it. Goes dead on one, a four pack for Bill Swain. Jeff Serra breaks out. And Hunter Patton. Honey Wayne, big money kid, has the buy. 13, 459, 7 at 150.40 miles an hour. And now we wait because Swain's going to come back around and face off against Carr. Can Swain be two of the five cars remaining? That is the question. Six cars remaining. So two a very small number, one third of six cars. Bill Swain is coming back around the corner. He's advanced one of his entries. Four sixty-six the dial for Swain Shane Carr dial four fifty. Sweet Shane. They go. Swain is 001. Carr is nine, and Carr takes the win. Dead on four for Shane Carr at 146 miles an hour as Swain breaks out. Swain was 001 on the tree. Carr was nine, and then proceeds to go dead on four. And Carr goes on to the next round, as does Bill Swain. <laughs> So here comes Cerruti and Cisco. 631 dial in for Steve Cisco. Fourth pun, I should say, slower than Cerruti's, or quicker, I should say, than Cerruti's 635. So Cerruti, a slight lead to be given here, and then Cisco's going to try to wheelie him down. A run worth many. Many thousands of dollars right here. Both lined up side by side. Red light start for Cerruti. So it's going to be Cisco. Hits the tree for 29. And Cisco takes it to the stripe. 632 8 at 99 miles an hour. As Hammerline goes down by himself. 585 5 on that 586. The one thing that Patton hasn't really had to face is someone that has dropped the 00 00 on him. Shane Carr has been punishing people on the other side of the racetrack where Patton has been racing like a surgeon out there and it's kind of two different styles that are going to run into each other right now. And Carr pre-staged now fully staged as Carr. Patton goes in flickering the bulb as he always does. The tension you can cut it with a knife. Carr is second off the starting line. Patton with 17. Stripe it's Hunter. 4605, 460 dial in. He is dead on five with a 17 light taking 14 at the finish line stripe. And Patton will move on to the final of Dragster. His car was 51 on a 50 with a 23 light. Bill Swain and Hunter Patton go 
goes 16. He'll have Lane Joyce in the final. This is Hunter Alpier, Huckleberry. Goes 485.5 at 116 miles an hour. So the drags for final, Swain Patton. Cisco and Hammerline on the door car side. Down to four. Brian, we lost our foot brake car in that little in the semifinals. But I tell you what, Rudy did great getting that far. Down to a couple guys just hitting the trans brake button now. And they are doing the job fine as Jason Hammerline from Unionville, Michigan. We could have an all Michigan final here depending on how this works out and how the next pair work out. Both cars locked in. Wheels up for Cisco as they always are. They leave within a single foul as they get to the finish line stripe. It will be Steve Cisco. Cisco goes 30 with a one on a 29 dial. As Jason Hammerline breaks out, Cisco was 18 on the tree for the win. Hammerline was 19 on the tree. Then he goes 584 5 on a 586 dial, but he took 24 down at the finish line. He took about four feet down there, and that freed Steve Cisco up for a trip to the richest final round he will ever be in in his entire life. This right here. It's so crazy that this is the semifinal this thing, because when we look at the two drivers that are in this matchup, you think this is it, right? You think this is the night ends here, but it doesn't. Whoever wins this one has one more to go. Swain Wright, pre-staged. Patton. Pre-staged. Let's see how flickery he gets with that bulb over there. Swain goes in immediately. Patton flickers it twice, and he's in now. They leave green, 002 green for Swain, 007 for Patton. They go to the end of the racetrack and it's Swain! Swain! Swain takes sixth out at the finish line. 65-3 on a 65, he's three over. Two light, a five pack. That's how you slay the dragon. You go five against him. He goes 12 and you go five. That's how you get it done. And Bill Swain will take on Cisco in the final round for the marbles here in Michigan. These two guys are going to try to fire the best runs they have ever put together in two very long-lasting drag racing careers. Swain was the giant killer. Steve Cisco rolling in. I'm telling you, the Chevy 2 has hiked the front end up but carried it out 125, 130 feet every lap down the racetrack today and yesterday. The most fascinating thing about this run to me is Steve Cisco has not had to run against a car as fast as Bill Swain's. Bill Swain has not had to run a against a car as slow as Cisco's. Both of them on different ends of the racetrack will be dealing with different factors. Both cars pre-stage now for the richest final round in the history of organized drag racing. Here we go. Monster wheel stand for Cisco. Swain is 004. Bill Swain of Iota, Michigan. No! Here it goes to Cisco! 628, he's dead on one. He's 11 on the tree. Swain breaks out, taking 13th out at the finish line. Stripe, Bill Swain breaks out after having left the starting line first. Unreal.
you will get that done for us too. Right now, we'll be much appreciated. You need to clear the area in front of the winner's circle. Hey, hands up, man, where are we right? All students, if you would, please. Nice Oh, nice. Well, down here in the starting line, Bob, nice we have Steve Cisco down here. We're talking to Jay Cosper Jr. Man, I don't even know. I, I cannot imagine what's going through your mind right now. I mean, the money is awesome. But, uh, for all the million-dollar races we go to that aren't a million, uh, this is what I want. Like, I, I just, I, I, I have a lot of friends. I have a lot of people that I think we start being a different. I just... I don't know. I know that I can do it, and I've done it on other stages, but it's just, this is crazy. <laughs> in this race car, we saw you do things, especially at the starting line, this car pulls wheel stands every time down the racetrack, and you sought out at least one triple zero and changed light today. Just tell me, when did you feel most comfortable in this thing? Every day but today, the car was a piece of sh**. <laughs> <laughs> so I started out the day, the guy was one over, uh, one red to me, and I was four over wide open, thinking I could go two under, and I just started, you know, I grew up driving, so I just... I I double O the finish line every three times, and every, you know, I had some breaks, the red light and the semi, but I, I, I don't know. I think the rear's broken because I tried to get be stupid when I turned around. I told John it was broken before, but when I came back up the truck, I kind of goosed it, and I think it's, I think it's broken. <laughs> Right on time. I, think, I know Anthony's watching, so well, I don't know. You have to charge me for the ring opinion. <laughs> <laughs>